everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thanks so much for checking out my video series, Way Out Wednesdays. Acronym is WOW. <laughs> really appreciate you joining me today. So I'm going to be talking about a really interesting subject today called Walk In Souls. Walk-ins. Now, you guys, I have tons of videos on this series. In this series, you can find them on my main YouTube page. If you click on the logo, the icon, it will take you to my main page and you can see some tabs there. You'll find one called playlist right along the top. Click on playlist and then click on wow. And you can see quite a number of interesting videos about spiritual topics. Okay, let's get started. I am channeling this uh, information. So I am a psychic and a medium. I'm a medium who can channel. And to be honest with you, I haven't even read an article about walk-ins. I'm basically going to tell you what my spirit guides are telling me to tell you. So let's get started. So the definition of a walk-in, the guides are saying that sometimes human souls there's a failure to thrive. The soul has a failure to thrive. Now it could be in relation to a trauma uh, that, that could be a physical trauma. It could be an emotional trauma, any sort of trauma. So each of us have this soul light in our body. This is the thing that is immortal. When we die, it goes on to live in another body or in another existence someplace else. It never dies. So even though we're talking about a walk-in, the soul that leaves doesn't die, okay? So our soul, this light, this sort of uh, soul light that we have, that each of us have, it can, it can lose its way. I don't know how to describe it other than it stops, it retreats. It completely retreats. Now, I need to make some clarifications here. People that take their own lives, that's a different thing. That soul, that mind-body connection, so we have our, our human mind is, is the physical thing that's trying to make sense of everything, trying to make sense of everything that is in our human existence. And then we have our heart, our soul, which is our immortal part of us, the part of us that knows everything, sort of our subconscious or our superconscious. So as we go through life, our human mind might become depressed or might become, might experience that failure to thrive and might decide it, it can't handle this life anymore. It doesn't want to live anymore. That is a decision that the brain makes. It's not the same thing as the soul shutting down and then being replaced, okay? So the soul is energy, is electricity. It's, it's a whole different type of entity than our brain. Now, you would imagine that if the soul is shut down and traumatized, the brain is also shut down and traumatized. You're not going to have, let me make sure that that's correct, that I'm telling, telling you exactly what they're saying. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So, so you can have, wow. Okay, so your brain your consciousness and your brain, your personality can continue, can continue interacting with life, with the job or the kids or the family, if you're a child or whatever it is, you may not, people might say something's wrong with her. Something's wrong with him. He's not doing well, or he's acting odd or something like that. They might, they might say that about that person, but the actual 
outer dimension of our human experience can be operating on some level and our soul can shut down. I didn't know that. So what that that's what that looks like is somebody says, okay, you know, they're kind of not acting right. But as we said, there's usually a trauma associated with this. So it would make sense. Well, she hasn't been right since the accident. She hasn't been right since she lost X, Y, Z, right? So they, so again, the human mind always wants to make sense of things. We always want to put something in a box that we understand. Even if we don't understand it, we're going to put it in a box, even if it doesn't belong in that box, because we need to understand it. Okay. So what's fascinating is that the soul shuts down. I don't, I want to understand that more because I don't, I didn't, to me, when you're a medium and you talk to dead people for a living, you realize the, the soul is kind of, well, you, you can't kill it. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's everlasting. It's the thing that is enduring. It endures human life after human incarnation after human incarnation. So for me to learn that the human soul could shut down and retreat is very intriguing. So what they're saying is, is that souls are, souls have, okay, all right, I, I knew this, right? Souls have personality. Souls have energetic tendencies is how they describe personality. But I would know, and you would know if you've done some work on yourselves, like uh, for your past lives, you would realize that there's patterns. So in every life, I'm, I'm always this kind of person, right? Or I'm more likely to be this kind of person. It's not like in my experience, in our lives, we don't go from being, we typically don't go from being super, super introverted and quiet. And then in the next life, the life of the party and the president of the United States, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's that, that would be, that would be a walk-in. <laughs> that would be too big. Not, not really, but that would be too big. Okay. We, our soul has a certain kind of personality. So you might be incredibly incredibly um introverted and in the next life you know you're just shy and then in the next life you know you're you're extroverted introverted you know it, it would be a progression it's not these wild swings okay so now we understand that if a soul has a certain predilection a certain type of energetic signature that if that soul had a particularly hard oh right okay if that that soul had a particularly hard couple of incarnations like really challenging incarnations whatever that means for that soul then going into this current life and then having a challenging incarnation that soul might be that's it i'm done cannot do this i thought i could but I can't, I want out, tap out, I'm tapping out. So the trauma happens, the soul says, I, I can't, I can't do it. Now, the outward extension of the soul, which is the personality, the brain, the ego, the personality of that soul is certainly going to be acting depressed or angry or definitely not well-adjusted. But that brain, that ego would be thinking, you know, my life is terrible, I'm depressed, I'm despondent, or I'm angry or whatever it was. But the, the brain itself is not considering suicide. Okay. The brain is like, well, this is my life. This is my life. So I sign up for, I'm just going to do the best I can. Or perhaps whatever it is, whatever the coping mechanism is, the coping mechanism could be drinking or drugs or withdrawal or depression. It, it could be anything. That's the way the personality, the brain, the ego choosing to deal with this. On the flip side, the soul is saying, I can't, I can't 
deal with the sadness that my human counterpart, the personality, is experiencing. It's too much. I don't want to experience this. So how does this happen? I mean, who, who, where's, where's the hotline, right? What, what is the soul? How does the soul communicate this to anybody? How does the soul ask for help? So the first thing that would happen is the soul would be emitting this sort of energetic emergency signal. The soul would be emitting this emergency signal that your spirit guides, your guardian angels would, would, would know, would know immediately, would be there. Now, the first thing they would do is they would try to, oh, right. They would try to reconnect the soul to the human existence or the human consciousness. Because what happened is the soul disconnected. The soul is like, I'm out. The soul has disconnected from its own human counterpart. So the first thing that the spirit guides would do and the guardian angels, and I want to say, you know, there's a team here, would, would try to reintegrate the soul and the human. Now they would do that by, by many, many different ways. I mean, first of all, they would be working with the human to get help because if the human can get help and um, offload the sadness or, or understand or work with the sadness or the pain or the anger, it would, it would be less agony for the soul to experience. And then the soul could be coaxed or could be reunited and reintegrated. Okay. But the soul is saying as it is right now, no go, not going to happen. So the first thing that happens is they come in and they try to get the human help. Now they can do that in a lot of ways. They can, they can give the human the idea to ask for help. They can give the human the idea to listen for people offering help and, and accept the help or be more malleable towards getting help. They can also work with other spirit guides of other people around that human to get the human help. So then all of a sudden you have, if, if that particular human is just shut down from their initial, their family, then what can happen is the spirit guides can go and get somebody that's a really good friend, but perhaps hasn't been in touch recently and tell them about what happened and get them to come and say, Hey, Hey, I heard about what happened. And sometimes when we shut down from our family, we'll be open to someone else. So the spirit guides know that they're going to bring the best possible person in to help that human. So the very first thing they're going to do is try to help the human. So the human can feel a little bit better and deal with the trauma better so that then they can reunite the soul with the human. Now, if that doesn't work, because it, we have free will, humans have free will. This is a very tricky experience or existence here on earth because we have this eternal soul in this human body with this brain, <laughs> which is very much a product of our upbringing and our genetics so which has not that much to do with our soul right so it's a it's a complicated relationship that's going on here so if they can't connect the soul with the human that's also true if this is a baby or a young child if it's a baby or a young child you can't there's just there's not much you can do. It's almost going to be a guaranteed walk-in because that soul is in agony and it, it need. It, they're not going to allow a soul to be in agony. Now you might say to yourself, well, I've been in agony. How come somebody never, never helped me? Well, again, you have to remember your brain, your consciousness has been in agony. Your soul 
may or may not have been in agony. We're not, we're not connected to our soul, most of us, 98% of us, 97% of us are not connected to our soul in that way. So your soul could have been fine. So let's say that, so let's go back to the child, the child, the baby, especially baby child. Um, if they, if they experience a trauma and they'll just, they'll just, Elvis has left the building. I mean, they'll just leave. They're, they're going to shut down. Now it's not like there's ever a human body without a soul. The soul cannot leave the body, but it can shut down in the body, which is not good. That's not a good thing because that's, it's basically kind of like leaving the body. It's not, it's not, they're, they're telling me the body, the human body cannot live without a engaged, integrated soul. So if that soul shuts down and nothing is done, then that body is not going to be viable. Okay. The physical body is not going to be viable. That soul is always viable. It's not going to die if the physical body dies. Okay. But that's not what we want. What we want is integration. Okay. Now, um, and we're going to talk about something else. Um, so, okay. Right. So let's, let's, If, if you're, if, if a baby has a walk-in or a child has a walk-in under say three, you're not, it's going to be very hard for you to know. Not impossible, but hard. If you're an empath and you're in tune with your intuition, you'll just know, especially if you're claircognizant, well, you'll just know claircognizant is psychic knowing they're sentient is psychic feeling. You're going to feel, you're going to know. Okay. And, and you may not even have words for it, but you might be like, I don't know. He was different after that surgery. He came back after that illness. He's different. Well, how is he different? I don't know. I can just tell you it's, he's different. It's changed. His energy has changed is what you're picking up on. Now, if the child is older, uh, or all the way up, you know, from a six years old or five years old, all the way up, then there could be some things that you could pick up on. So when you have a walk-in soul, the walk-in, let me see if I can describe this. The walk-in soul is different. It's not the same soul, you guys. It is different. However, it has access to some of the memories that the other soul had. But in my experience and what I'm learning right now from my spirit guides, not all the memories. So one of the things is, is that the new soul doesn't remember much of the past life. They have very weird blotchy memories like um it's like uh all dark and then the light gets shown on this one scene so they remember that scene and then it's dark and then they remember this scene so it might be they remember something from when they were 10 and something from when they were 12 and something from when they were 20 you know just depending on when all this went down now the soul that leaves the body is is cared for it is obviously souls are precious all souls are precious evil souls good souls doesn't matter they're all 100 percent valued in the same way they're all precious so that soul that leaves is going to be cared for is going to go through a real long process of healing um of, of energy attunement also, some apparently there's some way that the they can remove some of the memories. Uh, again, the reason that soul wanted to walk out was because they had too many hard lives, and it it just was too much. 
You know, when, when we're over there planning our life, when we're in between lives and we're planning our next life, which we do personally, we're in a state of euphoria. We're in a state of everything is easy. Everything is love. Everything is light. So when you're looking at your past life, you're like, oh my gosh, I was almost there. I really almost did it. I almost completed this thing that I wanted to do, this contract I had. If only I had turned right instead of left. If only I had believed in myself a little bit more, I would have taken that chance. And that would have led to this, this, this. And so it just looks so much easier. And that, that's how we end up down here on earth with too much on our plate to do. You might say that we're overconfident, right? So don't worry about the soul that leaves. The soul that leaves is cared for, is, is absolutely 100% cherished, loved, and cared for. Now, the soul that comes in can be from your soul group, typically, what? I say things that I swear to God I, that they tell me and then they go, no, that's wrong. And then I'm like, what? Okay. Okay. I take it back. That is the craziest thing. I'm going to have to figure that out. Okay. The soul that comes in does not need to be from your soul group. Now your soul group is a group of souls that you typically incarnate with. You know, let's say there's 50 of them and you know, you have a, a whole lot of permutations. You know, you can be this person's mother, this person's father, this person's son. You can be this person's teacher, this person's mother-in-law, this person's son. You, you know, you can run through their personality with all different angles. Remember, we said that people's souls kind of have a certain, a little bit of a certain personality to them, if you will. And so you can imagine how, if you want to learn a lesson, working with this one person's energy as a mother, as a daughter, as a husband, as a granddaughter, gives you the ability to learn that lesson from all those different angles from that particular energy. And then you go to the next person and you say, okay, I want you in this life to be my teacher, to be my first husband and to be my son, right? And, and those souls can all be in your life together, okay? So that's your, that's your kind of like your soul group. Now, for older souls who've incarnated like a bunch, well, they've done all of these permutations or they've done a lot of them and they want something different. They want something that they haven't experienced yet. So they'll bring somebody from outside of their soul group to incarnate in that life to spice it up, or to, which is ridiculous. You know, the guide said that because I'm like, that is... As a human, I disagree. But anyway, to give them a different experience, okay? So what was fascinating was they just told me the soul that, that walks in can be from a different soul group, which kind of blows my mind, to be honest with you, because, because you would think that this is a delicate operation, that you're doing a soul swap mid-human life, and you would think you would want somebody that's been in the group so that it's e it's easier. It's, um, you know what I mean? Like apples and apples, you know what I mean? And now all of a sudden you're going to stick a, an orange in there, you know, but, but the reason they're doing that is because this is crazy town, man. Crazy town is because an outside, a soul that's outside of your soul group, is going to be very different and it's not going to trigger your, it's not going to give you any of those lessons that you've been learning. I mean, that makes sense, right? If I've been learning this, these lessons with these 20 souls, therefore, if I've already cycled through five lessons with this soul, then, then that's, those have become what, what my human self would say, problems 
in my repeating incarnations that I've been trying to solve, right? Does that make sense to you guys? Because that soul has been teaching you lessons. You literally go up there and say, hey, in this life, will you be an SOB and like rough me up? And um, that way I'm going to learn to stand up for myself. And then, you know, you're going to go to jail for hitting me. And then you're going to get liver disease. And then I'm going to turn around and take care of you in your old years. And I'm going to forgive you and everything's going to be fine. And I mean, like, really? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the kind of stuff that you do up there, right? That's Those are the kind of agreements we're making. So if you have that energy that two lifetimes ago was an SOB come into your body, it may not be so good. It, it may feel again like trauma because your soul, because your body, you're going to remember that trauma. So for this reason, they want to bring in somebody completely new that is a completely new energy, completely new, so that you don't have any history. You don't have any energetic history with this soul. Your personality doesn't have, isn't, it's not going to trigger anything. That's the key, which I did not see coming. I did not see that coming. Okay, that's fascinating. So um, now, if you are, if you are of some age, you know, like if you're, like we said, over six or whatever it is, and you have a walk-in, people around you that are very close to you, especially people that are empathic and very close to you, will likely recognize something is different, okay? They might recognize that you're not the same. You, you're you just not the same. Well, how am I different? I don't know. You're just not the same. Or they might say, you're more serious than you were. Or they might say, you're a lot easier going than you were. Or they might say, especially if you're an adult and you've got a lot of history, right? I mean, if you've, if you've lived 30 years, people pretty much know you. So you may have this soul swap, this walk-in, and you may all of a sudden hate food that you used to love. You may love movies or music that you didn't used to like. Now, people make excuses. We talked about this in the beginning of the video. The brain, our, our society, we make excuses for things that don't fit, right? Um, if, if somebody's changed dramatically after a trauma, it makes sense to us, right? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't they change? Wouldn't they be a different person? But I mean, honestly, would they really be a different person that all of a sudden they can't stand the smell of X of this thing, you know, fresh baked cookies, they can't stand the smell of it, but yet they used to like sit in the kitchen when you were baking the cookies, you know? So we make excuses. We say, oh, something happened to them physiologically. Something happened to their sense of smell when they were in the intensive care unit. We make, we just make excuses. But the truth of the matter is, is that if there's enough of these things, check, 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 check. And if the person doesn't feel the same they don't feel like the same person, then that's a walk-in. That person has a new soul that they were not born with. Now, I know this is crazy, um, but it's true. I, I know people that, that have had walk-ins. I'm very familiar. I'm very familiar with it in a, in a, in a kind of, odd sense, but I've never studied it. I, I've never read anything about it. The guides are just uh, telling me about, about it at this time. What else do they need to know about walk-ins? Um, I don't know if this is one of you watching or if this is the guides, but somebody wants to know about relationships, right? Like, so if you're 35 years old and you have this trauma, whatever it is, 
whether it's emotional trauma or physical trauma, and your soul is like, peace out. I didn't sign up for this. Like, tap out, come get me. Um, and the new soul comes in. It is true that it can change marriages. It can change. Yeah, they're showing me some things. Yeah, it can change marriages. I mean, it can change the physical, the, the physicality of the marriage, the way, you know, you get used to the way someone is, the way someone is physical with you, how they hug you, whatever, whatever physicality that happens when, when pa passion or sex or anything like that, you know, that person. And then after that, after that walk-in, they could change. They could be more open or less open. They could be more, um, more of this and less of that. Uh, they, as we mentioned, their personality can change. They can have, they can be more forceful, um, or more easygoing. I mean, I just think it's hard. It, it's okay. So the guides are saying it's not unlike in some ways, like to make sense of it for you is, is how people would come back from having served in a war and they come back and they're not the same person. It's kind of similar to that in a sense, because that person has changed. And now you just, you, the only thing you can say is, I don't know that person. I don't know who you are anymore. So it's, it's very similar to that, but it's not the same because that person has changed outwardly and the other person has changed from the inside out. So it can affect parenting. It can affect your job, it, it can, it, it can affect, um, it, it can affect that whole person's life. It can change the direction of that person's life. So let's say that that person was a, um, for whatever reason, they want to say an attorney. Let's say that person was an attorney and they had whatever this traumatic experience was. Again, it can be an emotional event or a physical event or both. I mean, together, um, and, and they are out and a new, a new, a new soul comes in that, that new soul, the goal is that, that the new soul not change the human, the trajectory of the human experience. That's the goal. They're not supposed to be some wild, weird soul that comes in and everybody's like, what the heck happened to, the, to that person, right? That's not supposed to happen. There are subtle things that people that know you or know that person very well will pick up on, but it's not supposed to be overt, okay? But what ends up happening is because that energy is different, because that soul is different, that over the course of some time, say years, that energy of that soul is going to impact the outcome of that person's life. Not necessarily because the soul is trying to change it, but because those around the soul are now interacting with the soul differently. Okay. So you could, you could also, the other thing that could happen is, is that the soul that comes in is typically more, I want to use the word advanced, but I don't want to be judgmental. The, the soul that comes in usually has more experience. Okay. So you have a more experienced soul. It usually kind of catches on to things faster. It, um, I just, they just showed me something that was counter to what I was just saying. I hate when they do that because these things are not black and white. It's just not that simple. So I guess one soul could be, have more experience and, um, okay, okay, okay. One soul could have more experience and move quicker through the challenges and, and get on the soul's path faster. Okay. That's one, that's one outcome. But another outcome is 
that the new soul that comes in, even if it isn't an advanced soul, you know, these souls are coming in, in kind of a, a shit show for, for lack of a better description oh, at a really traumatic time, right? The, 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 the personality, the human has been traumatized so much that the soul wanted to leave the body. I mean, that's a tremendous amount of trauma and pain. So the soul that comes in, even if it's advanced, because it hasn't been in this body since it was born, it has to come up to speed very quickly. It has to get used to being in a body and, and used to wearing this overcoat of this personality that because it's not in its soul group doesn't even match. Some walk-in souls don't do so well. They may, they may succumb to addiction. They may uh, they just may not do that well. I mean, they're they're doing the best they can, but because they they came in at a stressful time, they may struggle. They may really struggle. So it's not a guarantee. Just because you're a walk in doesn't mean that you got a free pass. It doesn't mean you walked in with the instruction book, the God, the the one we all want, the instruction book for how to be a human on Earth. You didn't get that. You're still a human on earth. You still went through the whole process of, you know, of, of the amnesia, you know? So, and even though you're a more advanced soul, it doesn't mean that you can truck right through this trauma. So it is, it, it is difficult. That That's why they really don't want, they, they really don't want to put a walk-in in a soul. They really don't want to do that. That is the absolute last, last, last resort is having a walk-in. The best thing is, is to help the soul in the human body, you know, heal it within the human body, give it the resources that it needs on the external part, the human part, and allow it to re-knit back together. It's sort of like a broken bone right? We wanted that bone to knit back together. It's stronger. You know what I mean? Make it stronger. We don't want to have the separation, right? And, and we certainly, you know, don't want to like get rid of it, right? We want to knit it back together and it's easier to knit it back together if it's the initial soul. I know you guys have a thousand questions, but I can't think of anything else to tell you about this. Um, let me ask if there's anything else you need to know. Okay. The question that somebody wants me to ask is um, spirit guides. So, right, we our spirit guides are, are assigned to the soul. So the spirit guides of the soul that, left the human body would go with that human body and the spirit guides of the new soul that that went in the human body um would be with the human would the, so the new soul would have new spirit guides somebody wants to know about i'm reading your questions before you put them in the chat somebody wants to know what if we get like an evil soul or what if we get like a dark soul I don't, I don't see that unless that, unless that was your soul plan. And I mean, the original soul If the original soul, I guess that's a good, I guess that's a good question. If the original soul was a saint and, and then they had this traumatic experience and then they turn into like this crook, <laughs> I guess, I guess you would know something's up, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, but I don't really see that happening. It would have to be part of the soul's plan, the original soul's plan. Because remember, this is something really important that I need to talk about. That human is interacting with their other humans. It's not just me. I've got a contract that I'm working through with my sibling. I've got a contract I'm working through with my parent. I've got a contract that I'm working through with my spouse. So if my soul departs and a new soul comes in, 
I, I'm still on the hook <laughs> for that contract because that person, that sibling is counting on me playing my role so that we can work through what that person wants to learn. Just as the sibling is counting on me to, to, to help me learn what I want to learn. So it's almost like the soul comes in to the body and then there's this kind of 3D blueprint instruction manual thing that says on the soul level, this is what you're learning in this life. This is, this is what you're teaching them. This, this is what you're supposed to be doing. In other words, now, because the soul is new, they don't really have to necessarily follow that. They, they can, they, they really truly can say, yeah, not really feeling that whole thing with Pam. I don't think I'm going to be, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm going to go play guitar on the back porch. You know what I mean? So this, again, we all have free will, right? So it can get buggered up. You know, the whole thing can get buggered up. You've got these spirit guides that are, that are like trying to, um, get everybody on the stage and play their roles and do their thing and learn their things so that when we all cross over eventually, we can all get together and go, yeah, that was really good. I was successful in teaching you how to be more compassionate. And wow, did you ever teach me how to have boundaries? Man, that was great. We really did it, right? So that's really the energy when you cross over is one of, yes, we did it. Even though down here, you're like, you're an SOB, you're a jerk, you know, but that's teaching us our lessons, right? So it's kind of complicated, right? It's it's really and truly kind of complicated. So this is um, the last thing somebody wants to know is more information about why a soul would stop being in the body or why a soul would tap out. I'm reading your questions. Um, again, every soul is different. But some souls, let's say that your last two lives, you in one life, you lost your kids. You know, your kids were were taken from you. They were murdered. They died, whatever. So that was a traumatic thing that happened in your life that you never got over. The next life um, you're living, um, instead of your kids being taken away, uh, they stopped talking to you. They, they, they just became estranged for various reasons. So that's two lives where your kids have been taken away from you in different ways. See how we learn these lessons from different angles? So then the third life, the life where you tapped out, your kids were maybe the first time they, they had an accident and crossed over. And the second time they were estranged from you and then the third time, maybe they were brutally murdered in front of you. And that third time, you're like, that is it. That's it. That's it. I'm done. I thought I could handle it. I thought I made enough progress. I thought enough made enough progress in this, in this lesson of losing my kids. But I, I no, 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 cannot do it. Come get me. I'm tapping out. I'm pushing the button. Uh, you know, I'm out. So it could be something like that. So uh, perhaps you had, um, to, what, they're, what they seem to be showing me is that you wouldn't tap out as a soul based on one life of bad, terrible things. That it was the preponderance of life after life after life about a, around really, really horrible, horrendous thing that you've been trying to learn how to deal with over and over again and um, you just can't. You could have a trauma around um, a terrible accident if the soul was already having a traumatic life and then they had a, and, and one in which the, the soul was having a traumatic life and perhaps they were using some sort of substance to check out from their life already. And then when they, had this traumatic accident, they could have even had a near death experience and been told, you've got to come back. You can't, you're not, your time is not up. Well, they come back 
And not only do they have this traumatic, terrible life, and perhaps their addiction is raging, and then perhaps because of the accident, they're in a wheelchair. And they're like, no, that's it. No, I, I tried to go. You wouldn't let me go. I can't, for some reason, their brain or whatever it is will not let them take their own lives. So instead, the soul, well, it could also be that you were told that you can't take your own life, that you're not, you're not allowed to. How many people commit, try to, attempt to, and cannot take their own lives? So then your soul is like, okay, you won't let me go. I'm going. So you can see how um, the soul just says no. It could be any number of reasons why, but the soul finally just says, you know what? I've had enough of this. I can't, I just cannot deal with this. I need, I need out. So that's kind of how it would happen. Wow. So thank you so much for tuning in to my wow video today. Again, I really appreciate you checking these video series out. If you would like to, uh, be sure to see the next one, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And that way you'll know when it's Wednesday, because I'll be posting a video that day and check out the playlist. I'll put a link here for you to uh, link right to the playlist and you can check out some of the other videos and least but not last, please last, but not least when I'm, when I'm channeling things don't always come out in the right order. Leave me your experiences. I really think that the comments of the wow, and honestly, you can just go to my wow videos and read the comments. The comments are brilliant, truly amazing experiences that my viewers have had. So if you've had an experience, you think you're a walk-in, you want more, you have more questions, or you want to share something, please, by all means, if you feel comfortable leaving it in a public sphere, please do so. Okay. Otherwise, thanks so much for tuning in. Take really good care of yourself and we'll talk again next Wednesday.